Hi, it's Mike um, on 7th of June 2019 talking OBS Studio 2310 and about encoding overload. So what I'm going to do is do a quick slideshow of how we might be able to help people and make sense of my own performance and production if you want. So what we're going to do is um, show you what I've found. First thing, I've been an OBS Classic and Studio user for well over five years or so. I've stopped using it a bit but I've found something to do with um, encoding overload and problem solving log files and I'll show you exactly what that means. If I put on my machine, which I'm about to go into in detail, um, and you can relate that back to your own machine if you're maybe an occasional OBS screen recorder um, person. So if you start up with the arrow, and let me use the old laser pointer thing here, and you get this thing which is just down here where my laser pointer is, is putting up there, encoding overloaded, consider turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset. I used to get that, and I do get that all the time and I'll tell you why um, especially with my uh, Google Earth series which was a nightmare because recording your screen inside Google Chrome it is a big problem if it just freezes so you're you know a bit like now recording away you know with your voice and talking about something but on screen you've got a horrible um, just recording frame rate problems and I'll tell you how this works if you open up OBS studio look in help log files and it says show log files and also view the current log if you're just looking for them on your hard drive then left hand panel means for me on my windows 10 machine it's users mic app data roaming obs studio and logs so what this really means is and i will um, be thorough as i try to be also to be pacey but also to be um well just thorough isn't it really if you open up one of these things for me personally the number of lagged frames due to a rendering lag or stalls is this which is 20 percent or number of skipped frames is 15 percent and this is where um, you can actually look at it and decide what you're going to do about it so in this particular setup file and what i'm getting to um, is that in the file it gives you an idea and again I'm not an expert on this and I've tried to look in the help form and I've found nothing so I'll either just record my thoughts you know going through and that is that every time you use OBS and you know I'm using OBS right now look there it is look it's starting you know it's I'm not using any microphones I'm recording in the zoom h2n which you'll see separately and what happens is that every time I start there'll be an initializing idea time stamped it was look at um, presumably what is found i.e. an Intel HD graphics notice I'm not using the 620 because my machine simply doesn't have it um, and it also says about which is the precursor to this is CPU Pentiums it tells me my machine um, it knows what uh, in this case a quad core it's using the memories the Windows 10 version and that sort of stuff um, for me personally knowing that I do have, I'm not going to say graphic issues, but it's pretty obvious that using an Intel HD graphics, where the, if you bought a brand new machine, it would probably have the Intel HD graphics 620 or more, depending on the machine. Is it really worth me as an occasional user of OBS, quite honestly, to upgrade and pay another $500 odd for a brand new machine when this machine's not broken? Similarly, begging a question that I have a Moto G4 and Android 7 would it really benefit me to go out and buy you know for me a Moto G7 Play would I get any better performance for occasional things so look this is how I work and you can relate it back to yourself at this precise moment I'm using OBS which records my screen I just showed you that by bringing it in I'm also sometimes recording the desktop audio if appropriate at this moment in this video I've turned it off because I'm not accessing any sounds from my machine so in other words OBS records the screen checkbox yes I can record OBS for the desktop audio yes one thing that I stop doing and that is that for my microphone like right now I'm speaking to you in a zoom h2n which is recording to its SD card inset 
I can USB this into my machine but I've stopped doing it because I was getting a few errors and I thought it might be overloading either OBS or my machine. Why bother you know complicating matters just get the zoom out and then for me I'm doing a post edit in Audacity uh, on PowerDirector. So getting along to and it's not about me it's about reflecting back on everybody so if I went into my OBS settings at this precise moment I think I'm actually using 1280 by 720 six frames a second I have two choices my inbuilt Lenovo G50 or whatever it is laptop has a 1366 by 768 which is this screen here and I also have on the right hand side an extended monitor which is a 22 inch monitor 1920 by 1080 so my two choices for OBS are to place OBS on my internal monitor and record the extended I was getting some errors on that maybe for the size of the frames maybe the frame rate or right now I've swapped and I'm actually putting OBS on the right hand side on my extended monitor but I am recording my laptop screen and at the moment I've got a maximum record rate of 1366 but I'm only going down to 1280 because I'm just preserving or trying to preserve as much CPU as I can. Now if you open up OBS settings and again this is all self-taught by me I'm nowhere connected to the OBS um, studio team or any kind of coding whatsoever but in general you can see that it says out mode simple I'm using a video bitrate of two and a half thousand and it looks like that now what you'll notice which I didn't realize is if you go over to output advanced when it says encoder it use it says use the stream encoder which at this precise moment is two and a half thousand uh, x264 audio like that so what I didn't realize is or, or just know where it was now I do if I go to advanced I can swap all of those things I've kept it as is at the moment so my conclusion through this quite honestly is for me personally and it might help you as well if you're having problems and that is for me I'm going to record on a smaller screen not the larger one I don't know when I plug in like a VGA cable whether that's causing uh, problems and it obviously is because I'm getting um error overloading things going on I'm going to drop my frame rate as low as possible to preserve CPU and frame errors sometimes I even record at one frame a second if it's just for you know things privately I'm recording I think about six chances are that as nothing is really happening on screen here you are not going to see any difference um, at YouTube watching this Record the audio dedicated to a standalone microphone. I'm doing that because I know a lot of live streamers and people, you know, pros as well for TV and all sorts of different things. They use one machine for one job. Makes sense. You know, if I speak to you in the audio right now, then my Zoom and the HD, sorry, the SD card inside of it is taking care of the audio where OBS is taking care of the video. So therefore they're separated. Hopefully they won't mix and conflict with each other. Number four. I post edio edit right now stay that again because I can't speak I post video edit using a mobile Android power director with the audio mixed from audacity and then I just put it onto the SD card and that is the speed that I can work as opposed to using Vegas movie studio on desktop I can do though it just takes me more time and quite honestly the quality is amazing from power director number five I'd like to share ideas with people like this video simply to, to get a conversation going. I'm not a huge OBS Studio user, but I used to be an awful, awful lot. I record screens on mobile as well. And number six, keep thinking about the if and when to upgrade my laptop and the mobile phone. And quite honestly, there's no way that I can make an argument um, right now to actually say that. So that was me, Mike Downs. I think I'm going to finish it there. Good luck with it all. Goodbye.